Good morning, church family. It's good to be in your presence one more time. Uh, this Thanksgiving season, I'm going to wish you a happy Thanksgiving uh, right now. And I hope everything will be a blessed situation for you. I want to give you a few people to say some prayers for, uh, a few announcements. Nora Downey is finally home. So let's praise the Lord for that. Now, she had a new address. She had to get a, a larger apartment, one with two bedrooms. So she has a new address, but she has the same phone number. So we'll give her some calls and let her know you got word. Uh, she talked to Sister Tyree and she hadn't heard from nobody, but we didn't know she was home. She came home uh, the first of, of uh, last week, right about Monday. So let's praise the Lord for that. Keep holding up uh, Sister Phyllis Lane in prayer. As you know, she's home and all the rest on our prayer and healing uh, list. Sister Virginia Arnold and, and, and on down the list, I, I, have, I don't have my, my list with me. I, I do want to, to, to add, make a, just a special prayer for Reverend Trishel's family. Uh, not he and Daphne, but he and uh, his family. Uh, down in Mississippi. Uh, we told you that they, they, we got some members dealing with uh, COVID, uh, 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 mother and daughter, and uh, he had death in the family. And uh, then his daughter uh, is it, dealing with uh, caregiving. Uh, and and uh, they dealt with the storm that came through and uh, uh, tore off the roof of another family member down there. So we just want to hold up uh, that the whole family, just keep on praying uh, for them and uh, pray for Reverend Trishel as he uh, comforts and do whatever he has to do with with uh, all the family. Amen. Uh, this is Thanksgiving and I got up today and uh, I've got a little, um, a little, little Thanksgiving message that uh, I'm going to give. I'm not going to be <clears throat> taking as much time as I've been taking, but uh, we know this is that season for celebrating, and um, a lot of people uh, will have uh, tables that don't have the people at them that were there last year. In some instances, it's because uh, of the COVID uh, virus. They're suggesting that we don't have a big gathering. And the suggestion that you don't have people traveling. They're even suggesting that just the people who go in that certain home uh, uh, to just do it, to try to cut down on this virus that is attacking the whole world. And uh, don't forget, keep your mask on, social distance, uh, stay home as much as you can, and don't stop giving your tithes and offers to the church. And I do, I was saying it every week for a long time, but pray for our governor. Uh, he's under great stress and strain. Uh, his own party is turning on him. And I think he's doing an outstanding job. And all across America, they're thinking this because they're having, having him on national TV and some of everything. And he was moving uh, in the right direction uh, when most Republican governors were not, because they were listening to the president who pretended that uh, this was not a big deal. And it was always a big deal, and we even watch it now where uh, the leadership uh, nationwide are doing nothing uh, harder to deal with this virus. And we saw so many Republicans uh, discourage masking and, and distancing and all of that uh, to try to pretend that it wasn't what it was. So pray for our government, pray for our nation, and then pray also that uh, the, the, the games that's being played to uh, slow down the uh, el el president-elect Obama, I'm, I'm sorry, president-elect Biden, from uh, taking his job and, and leading our country. Uh, we, we're, we're in a mess. But let's look at Thanksgiving. But, but, but 
we just want you to know that that God is still on the throne and and uh, he, he cares and uh, we want to get through this thing so I want you to just kind of uh, go with me today to first uh, <clears throat> Thessalonians 5 I'm gonna get I'm gonna have to get more than one Bible here today first Thessalonians uh, 5 and uh, around about the um, 12th verse, 1 Thessalonians 5 and around about the 12th verse, we're going to read that. <clears throat> we're going to go down into a few more verses, all right? And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Amen. We exhort you, brethren, let me, let me go away. Now we exhort you, verse 14, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Now here's what I, here's what I want, to, want, to, want to focus in on. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let me read that again. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Amen? In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks, for it is the will of God. I want to talk about developing an attitude of gratitude. Amen? Developing an attitude of gratitude. Uh, notice, notice, notice what he says there twice in those uh, scriptures that I read. He used the word brethren. When he started out uh, talking, he was talking to, to uh, about the ministers. Amen. How we ought to appreciate the ministers because they're bringing us the word of God. I beseech you, brother, to know them that which labor among you and are over you in the Lord. Amen. And he said you ought to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Amen. But then when he goes on down here, you, you notice that's when he said rejoice evermore. Amen. He's talking to the brethren now. The ministers have brought the word. He's telling the, the telling uh, 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 the, the members and the brethren. He said, "Rejoice ever no evermore." This is a week of Thanksgiving, Amen. And Thursday is is actually Thanksgiving Day, and and this is the season of, of Thanksgiving. And, you know, and as I said earlier, there are going to be some empty spaces uh, uh, at the table, Amen. Uh, where loved ones sat for years, and and. Uh, uh, I just went to a home going and, and did it uh, uh, Friday. Uh, the, the home going of Brother Teddy Gates, uh, the husband of uh, Veronica Gates and, and, and Terry's father. And, and uh, uh, there, there are so many people this year uh, and in between uh, last year when we had Thanksgiving that saw their loved ones sit at the table with them and, and, and now they're not there. And there's so many other things that's, that's going on uh, at the tables where we sit. Uh, a lot of people are troubled about uh, paying the rent. There are people who are hungry. There, there are children uh, that, that didn't sleep well because they were hungry. There are people who are wondering uh, where next month's rent is coming. There are folk who are wondering if they're going to have a job uh, uh, ne next year. And, and, and yet, you're, you're hearing me talk uh, by the scripture, and the Bible is saying, rejoice 
evermore. Amen. In, in everything. Amen. Uh, give thanks. You, you notice it, 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 it didn't say uh, uh, um, for everything, give thanks. It said in everything, give thanks. Amen. Uh, and you notice the sequence, it, it, it says, uh, uh, starts out with uh, uh, re 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 rejoicing. Amen. Rejoicing. And, and, and then, then, then thank you. It, it, because this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. And, and, and the word says, pray without ceasing. Amen. Giving thanks in everything and rejoicing uh, forevermore. Amen? Uh, I, I want to go over to, to Philippians uh, 4 and 4 uh, to, to use that also. Stay with me now. Philippians 4 and 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It's almost like like, like Paul uh, uh, gave us two, and uh, even there are more places, but gave us this one uh, and when he says rejoice. It's like uh, there was something where God sent somebody would say, what did he say? You, you don't know what I'm dealing with. You don't know what I'm, I'm going through. You don't know what's happening in my life. And, and Paul said again in that Philippians 4.4, 4, again, I said, rejoice. Amen? Amen? You see, uh, I can't always rejoice in my circumstances, but I can always rejoice in my God. Did you get that? Now, let me say, I said I, but you can't always rejoice, amen, in your circumstances. But you can always rejoice in your Lord, amen. And if we learn to rejoice in the Lord, amen, you're going to find that God is going to do what Romans 8.28 says, and that is all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. Amen? All right? So so, so that's why he said, again, I say re re rejoice. Amen? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? That's why that Philippians 4, uh, 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 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing. Amen? In other words, don't be anxious about anything, but in all things, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen? And then it says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? We talk, you know, all through this year, we've been dealing with the Reverend Tussell, uh, same thing uh, on, on our Wednesday broadcast, have been dealing with how the enemy will attack the mind. He will he will attack the mind. He will put negatives in your mind so that your mind is ruling you rather than your heart and your spirit. Amen? And 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 and, and the secret to a successful Christian life is when we when when we think and act not according to our feelings, but according to the word. That the principle is everywhere. You know, it, 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 the principle is there even in healing. You know, a lot of, a lot of us don't get healing. Uh, I'm, I'm dealing with a problem right now, but I know the healing is coming, you know, because, because according to the word, Jesus took our sins and sickness to the cross. Now, if he took them to the cross, we don't have to keep on, keep on taking it. But I've got to keep teaching it. I didn't mean to go this way. I've got to keep teaching healing because we have a tendency to ask God, Lord, heal me, instead of uh, accessing what God has already done. He has already healed us. But when we keep seeing sickness, uh, doctors keep speaking sickness, uh, uh, we keep feeling sickness, uh, people keep mentioning sickness, uh, then we start speaking again, we start speaking what we see rather than what God says. Now, if Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, if he made a curse for us, that the blessings of Abraham would be ours, and the blessings of Abraham come from deliverance from poverty, uh, uh, from sickness and long life. 
Amen? But but if Jesus already uh, took our sickness, when he said it's finished, that was it. The Bible teaches us then that uh, 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 in, in, in the word of God, whosoever shall say, Mark uh, 11, whoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast in the sea, doubt not in your heart, believe the words you say will come to pass. You're going to have what you say. Amen? But now, 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 now you, you got to remember that that you've got to be saying what God has said. You know, that the, 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 those who, who, who call the, the faith walk uh, blab it and grab it. No, it might be that if, because if people are teaching it and don't know it. But if you're teaching that you can say what God said and get what he says you have, then that's right. Now, if I want a Mercedes, he hasn't said nothing about me having no Mercedes. Amen? Uh, uh, he hadn't, he, the, the other things he hadn't said nothing about me having. But he has said, surely he borne our sickness and carried our pain. With his stripes we were healed. Okay? If it all already has happened, why don't I go get it? All right? Well, well, uh, I think it's Isaiah, I believe it's 45 at 11, where God mentioned what he's done and then said, command ye me. Okay? What, 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 what you do there, based on what he said, you don't keep worrying in your mind about what you don't have. You access what the scriptures say you have. Now, healing is an example. Uh, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Your soul is your mind. The enemy will get in your head right here at Thanksgiving. I don't care what, how it looks out there uh, in the news and all those things. Take it seriously. Do what they say. Mass, social distance, all of those things. Do that because you, you should. But then, but so, so you don't presume on God, okay? But the scripture says, and I, I mentioned healing, so I'm going to say that. Uh, uh, we can, we all, we already have it. You know, do you know healing is in your, it is in your spirit? Amen? Healing is in your, it's in the spirit person. Because the spirit person is not sick. It's in the spirit realm. Amen? But to access what you already have, by faith, then you have to command what you have to come to come, according to that Isaiah forty five. Command you me, Amen. You know, and 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 then then you wait on it to come because uh, uh, it, you, you, the manifestation is what you're waiting on. You're not waiting on the healing, so you don't ask God to do what He's done, but you access what He's done, Amen. And so you want to pull out by faith out in the spirit realm. Amen. Into the physical realm, you want to pull the manifestation of what you already have. Now, I, I, I threw a lot at you there, but but that's how it works. And then you can command that to come, you know. You can command healing to come, you know, by faith, amen, based on the Word of God, because you already have it. Now, if you're out there drinking and smoking weed and drinking all the rest of the stuff that folks do to tear their bodies down, then, then you are... Uh, 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 not respecting the temple. The temple of the Holy Ghost is your body. And so you, if you neglect it, you can't pull forth what you have because you're destroying what you have. Amen? Oh, my God. How did I get over that? Amen? Yeah. You, there's so much we already have. That's why you can speak to it. Amen? Speak to the mountain. Tell the mountain to move. Be thou cast in the sea. Doubt not in your heart. Believe the words you say will come to pass based on what God has already said. Amen? And you're going to have it. Let that soak in for a minute. You, you, you already have. You already have your healing. Amen? Jesus took it to the, he took it to the cross. It's finished. Don't ask him to come do it. He's done it. Amen? Then you call forth what he's done. Amen? Out of the spirit realm into the physical realm by faith based on the word then you command it to come. You're not commanding God. You're commanding what God has put there for you to come because it's being held up. Oh, my God. How did I get into that? That's enough to stop on now. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just don't let the devil get in your head and tell you what you don't have. Let me go back uh, 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 to, to this uh, Philippians 4 and 6. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
Let your request be made known. You remember in, in, in I believe, I, I think it's the 11th chapter of John, uh, where Jesus went to get Lazarus, and he was sinking in the grave, and and uh, uh, they, the, the, the sisters were upset, and they said, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have been dead. Jesus said, basically, he said, do you know who I am? Uh, I'm just adding that a little bit in there to, to, to make my point. Uh, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you're talking to a resurrection, amen? And, 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 and oh my God, if I hit that now, it makes me want to go somewhere else where Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Amen? Amen? When you want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, you had to have had a situation that required resurrection. Amen? Let me, let me, let me go back to what Jesus did there now. Uh, he said, uh, uh, when, he, when, he, when he told him who he was, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen? And, and, and then he said, Lazarus, no, before that he said, Father, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. A lot of you sitting out there today, you've got to go to his word. That's why we keep preaching the word. The name of our church is Freedom Hill Bible Church. Actually, the official name of our church, the legal name, is Freedom Hill Bible Baptist. But years ago, I just kind of eased Baptist out and just said Freedom Hill Bible because that's what we are. Where, where Baptists may, according uh, to that tradition, say something that, in my opinion, is not Bible, uh, I go with Bible. Amen. Uh, so that's why we just Freedom Hill Bible Church. The, the Bible is, is, is the inerrant, infallible Word of God. And you've got to meditate on it day and night, every day. Amen. And then begin to apply it. All right? That's why Jesus said, Lord, I thank you for what I thank you for what you are getting ready to do. Amen. Uh, 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 don't let your, the devil put in your mind that God can't do what he says. Uh, that the Bible uh, is not the inerrant, infallible word of God. It, it, it'll do what it says if you know how to apply it. Amen? And so so, 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 so you've got to start learning to expect manifestation of what God has promised. Amen? You've got to take it out of, 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 of the realm of hoping. Amen? And, 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 and go and seize it. That's why I say uh, hope will see it, but faith will seize it. Amen? And, and when I mentioned about healing is already yours. you got to learn how to go and seize it, though. That's what faith will do. Faith will reach into the spiritual realm and pull it over into, amen, the physical. That's where the healing comes. Now, you already have it, amen, by grace. Amen, by grace, you have it. Amen? You have it by the grace of God. But you got to put it into uh, the physical, amen? So you got to start learning to pray for manifestation. Uh, 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 not pray for it, but claim it. Amen. It's it's already yours. Amen. Happiness is already yours. Uh, power is all your already yours. Amen. The peace of God is already yours. Amen. But you got to start speaking for peace. All right. In everything, I don't care what you're dealing with. In everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, uh, by prayer and supplication. Prayer is just regular prayer, just talking to God, just praying. Supplication, amen, is when you're coming to God with the specifics, amen. And, and then you go, and then with thanksgiving, you go, you thank Him for what He's already done. And you thank Him for what He's getting ready to do before you even get it, amen. Amen. Make your request be made known to God. And what happens when you sincerely believe that God's going to do what He say based on what He has said? The peace of God. Uh, Philippians say, uh, 4 and 7, which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen? Amen? See, see, prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. It's something going back, back and forth between you and God. It's not just you. You're, you're, you're talking to him, and he's talking to you, and you're talking to him, and he's talking to you. That's what meditation does. Amen? It's a two-way street. You see what I'm saying? Amen. You see, uh, uh, so 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 this is this is this is what Thanksgiving is about. I'm thanking you all for what you're getting ready to do. I know what I'm going through. You know, let's let's face it. Uh, uh, I can identify with, with with some things people go through. You know, uh, if y'all remember, uh, next month 
It'll be five years since my wife went to be with, be with the Lord. You remember I was preaching at, at, at the New Zion Baptist Church on Thanksgiving when it looked like uh, when she was battling this fight with cancer just six months, she was gone. And it, and, it, and it looked like she was going to be able to come home for three hours that Thanksgiving day. I was so happy when I was preaching. I mean, that when I got up that day, but I found a little before I went to church at 11 o'clock because she had, uh, was so weak, she couldn't come, you know? And she never came home, and, uh, you know? But, but, but you say, how can you be thankful for that? Oh, I'm thankful that uh, uh, she didn't suffer. I, I'm thankful that uh, 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 she didn't let nobody know but my grandson, Josh, who's shaping this. And Josh shared, shared with me what I'm about to share with you two or three years later. She canceled her chemo. I had an ambulance. I had to pay for it because she, she, she could only go once a month on, on the insurance. And, and I paid for them to, to bring her up to town. And, and we tried to figure out how she ended up not doing it. And she had told Josh and, and Greg, talking to them, she was never going to take it. She said she saw what it did to my daughter, Tony. And she said she was, it, it, it was horrible. You know, all the things that happened. But she said, I'm, I'm not going through that. You know, I didn't, I didn't realize that. But, but she, that was her plan. You know, when she went to be with the Lord, what I did, I trusted God. I remember that Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. To them that love the Lord, that are called according to his purpose. And you know, we were raising these two children uh, in our teenage, 16 and 14 now. Five years ago, you can take five off of that and get that age. And I said, Lord, I think it would be easier, uh, especially for my little boy who spent his whole life with us and all. But, but once again, I found peace in knowing all things work together for good. Some way, somehow, God saw something down the road that would say it would be better this way than the way you planned it. And that's what you got to do. You got to thank God for what he's done and thank God for what he's doing and thank God for what he's going to do. Amen? You see what I mean? That's why Paul said, again, I say, rejoice. Amen? And, and then he said, uh, uh, that peace of God, which passes all understanding, it's going to keep your heart and it's going to keep your mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, uh, and when you look at that Philippians, uh, 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 and Paul mentions again over uh, in the book that I may know him. I just want to know him and then I want to know the power of his resurrection. You see, and I say again, uh, Jesus had to go through some turmoil and some trials and some and, and, and those, those 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 days on, on those those three days you know were, were terrible at Friday you know and and and, and, and the, how God put three days into two days and and got him up amen and that's what you got to always remember if you want to you know him you want to know the resurrection amen amen because the resurrection is it, 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 uh, uh, it, it is what it, it, it's the loosening from whatever Satan put on you to take from you, Amen. But 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 God came to set us free, and and so He came to grow us. And let's always remember: you know, when our loved ones are gone, they're happy because they've they, they they've already experienced resurrection power. Amen? And I don't care I don't care what you're going through. When you look back, if you're, if you're a child of God, this is for a, a child of God, now, not for those that don't know him. But when you, you look back over your life and you'll see things that happen and you say, how if I'd have known that was going to happen? And here I am, I made it. I wouldn't believe I could have made it. Somebody you lost, the job you lost, the health situation. You know, at, 80, at, 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 at 85, you hear me talk so many times about when we first started ministry, uh, you know, at 33, and, and we our church zoomed from uh, 96 on roll to over 2007 years, and all the great things that was happening, you know, and all that. And and if somebody was said was said to me, you're gonna lose all that at, at a young age, 
You will be an independent church. You won't have the backing of a denomination or none of that. We're saying at 85, you're going to still be healthy and happy and still in ministry. And when I look back over so many other things, brain surgery, you see this little, 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 little something right here, amen, where they went into my head, amen. But hey, uh, th uh, three weeks later, I was up, back up preaching again and, and never had pain. You know what? I used to just talk about the goodness of God. That's called resurrection. And I had to go on on when I lose my baby daughter, you know, with cancer, uh, you know, and she was a daddy's girl, a big time daddy's girl in her 40s, 47, you know? And, and I look back and, 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 and I see resurrection. I'm seeing what the children are doing and, and knowing she's in heaven with the Lord. And let me tell you something. God keeps saying, rejoice. Amen? Amen? Rejoice. Just keep on rejoicing. Don't tell yourself, I just can't do it. Amen? You, you, you got to do it. Amen? You see? Uh, you, 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 you can't. You, you can't instantly be, become thankful, you know. I, I, you just don't know what I'm going through, Reverend. I, I just can't be thankful now. Amen? But you can start habitually practicing gratitude. I don't feel thankful, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Amen? That God has come into my life. Let me get, let me, let me get to Ephesians right quick. Amen? This is a teaching day that Ephesians 5, right quick, Ephesians 5, G-E-P, G-E-P, come on Ephesians, where are you? Ephesians 5, hang with me church, I'm teaching today, all right? Ephesians 5, 18, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, giving thanks always for all things unto God and Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, amen. Uh, uh, just, just learn to just practice an attitude of gratitude, giving thanks always for all things unto God, speaking to yourselves in songs, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart. Amen? Just have a, develop that attitude of gratitude. Amen? You see? Because we give thanks in everything because we don't know the end, but God does. You know, whatever I'm going through, I don't know the end, but God knows the end. Amen? And the end for us is going to be great. Amen? Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And we're just going to be thankful. Now, again, that Romans 8, 28, you just can't hear it enough. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Amen? Everything is not good, but he makes it all work together for good. Amen? And so that's, that's why you have to trust God. Amen. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. And God is going to make whatever you're dealing with, he's going to make it work together for good. Amen. You will never see the full picture. But before you were born, God saw the whole thing. Amen. To run to say, Lord, I am grateful. I'm grateful. I don't, I don't care what I'm seeing around me. I am grateful. I don't care uh, how things look. I am still grateful. Amen. Because I know you know what you're doing. And I know you are God. Amen. And I know weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen? So let not your heart be weary. Amen? Don't let your heart be troubled. He said, if you believe in, in, in God, in me believing, if God believe in me also, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Amen? I've gone to prepare a place for you. So we got a lot of loved ones gone because God got that place ready. Amen? And so you just hold on and hang on in there. 
and be be grateful. Be grateful in everything rejoice, not because of the bad situation, but in spite of the bad situation, because help is on the way. Amen. So you have a great Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Have a blessed Thanksgiving. And keep rejoicing. Keep praising. God is still on the throne. Amen. And God bless you and have a great Thanksgiving. And remember, keep calling what is not as though it is. And you call it right into manifestation. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you, dear Lord, for Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Lord, for the fact that this is not our place. This is not our home. We're just passing through on our way to an eternal home. Amen. That's indescribable. We thank you. We bless you. We lift you up. Bless the people of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Now that sinner that don't you don't know Jesus as your Savior. This is you're not saved because you're good. You're saved because you asked Jesus Christ to come in and to save you. Amen. There are people in the world who are morally better than some folk in church, but they won't go to heaven because they accept Christ. Amen. And we ask you right now to say, Jesus, Lord Jesus, my Savior, become my Savior, rather, and save me. Come into my heart and my life. I receive you right now in the name of Jesus. If you said that, according to the word of God, you just got saved. God bless you, and I love you.